you do again. All right, what's up, guys? My name is Fotshedze Nikolaou, and I uh, have here Ryan Healy. Hey, Ryan, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. That's nice. That's nice. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, yeah, Ryan has, I mean, what I would like to do now is, like, give, like, a quick intro about Ryan, and then we'll get into the interview. So, Ryan has been married to Stephanie since 1999. And they have six children. Now, for me, this is like really amazing. So, yeah. And one of like my, yeah, favorite pastimes on Facebook is waiting for Ryan to share like a story from one of his kids. I mean, I remember one where I think it was Lily who was advising Owen to, yeah, I mean, put on some tomato sauce on his face yeah. and pretend, yeah, that he has like a sunburn. I'm like, man, that's like so funny. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, so, thanks. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, so Ryan has been a full-time copywriter since 2002 and he has written copy for over 250 clients, including big companies like Organifi, Bio Optimizers, Earth Echo, Agora Financial, and dedicated emails. He's also worked with well-known business leaders like Danette May, Ray Higdon, Chris Haddad, Alex Mendozian, Terry Dean, and Josh Bezzoni. And he began managing email lists in 2015, which I don't know, Ryan, like okay, back then, like did you guys call it like email list management? Because I think it's a, like a very new term. So did you guys call it? Yeah, like, I mean, it wasn't is popular obviously but yeah. um yeah i mean i called it you know managing the email list or list management you know so yeah yeah gotcha. yeah, yeah. And nowadays it feels like okay everyone is an email list manager i'm not sure if it's like the people i follow but it's like oh i'm an email list manager email list manager email list manager yeah 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 <laughs> yeah all right so yeah, while since 2015, yeah, he has been in charge of sending hundreds of millions of emails and he was able to generate tens of millions of dollars in revenue for his clients. And when Ryan is not writing copy or managing email lists, yeah, you, you will find him taking care of his kids, reading classic literature. I think like it's like one of your other like most popular topics on Facebook, you're always like reviewing a book every single week or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is like, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, riding his bicycle or just spending quality time with his family. So yeah, there you go. And yeah, once again, thanks for being here today. And the format of the interviews is very simple. I asked Ryan to come up with five or more stories from his life, and he's going to serve those. And we were going to try and extract some lessons for the listeners. So I don't know, unless you want, do you want to like add anything or do you want us to jump straight into the story? Sure. Right? You, yeah. you just tell me which one you want to start with, I guess. Okay, let's start with the first one. Like, uh, what was it? Uh, it was John. Uh, yeah, getting ripped John, off. One of the clients yeah. ripped me off. That, that's a great, yeah, great beginning. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, that was a while ago. Um, he wanted me to write copy for his program. It was a, it was a pretty big project. I was excited to do it. Um, typically, I was charging 50-50. Like how, how do you charge for copy when you do it? 50, 50, uh, all up front. Yeah. I mean, half up, up front and half after I deliver the first draft. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's kind of what I was doing at that time. And he wanted to, he wanted to um, make the fee schedule more complicated. And so he wanted to deliver, I, I'm going off memory here. So the percentages might be a little bit off, but it was something like, 30%, uh, you know, on, uh, up front, you know, 30% when the first draft was turned in, uh, you know, 20% 20 on edits when, when we have a full moon. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the final clause said, um, the balance will be paid when the client is satisfied uh, something to that effect. Okay. Yeah. In my mind, I was, I was, it was still early in my career. I think I had been freelancing about three or four years at 
that point. And so my assumption was, you know, he uses the copy, the client is satisfied. Yeah. Um, and what ended up happening was, you know, number one, he was, he was a part of the French, but he's just a pain in the ass with all the edits. And like, he would, he would, you know, put comments in the document. Is it okay if we change this word to this word? And it's a synonym. I'm like, yeah, fine. Change. It. I don't care. It's, you know, like it's your, <laughs> yeah. it's your sales letter. And if you prefer, you know, this word, you know, automobile over car, sure. Put automobile. I don't care. You know, like yeah. he, it was all these like little nitpicky things. And so he ended up running the copy. Keep in mind, this was a, a very expensive program that he was selling at the time. Okay. Back in 2008 or nine, whatever year it was, he was selling his program for like $8,000. Uh, so you remember what program this was? Uh, it, yeah, it, um, I haven't used his name, so I feel comfortable talking about oh, okay, the program. Yeah. It was a, basically a program for how to write a book, right. um, a book to demonstrate your authority and then generate clients and, and revenue, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and so uh, he runs my copy for over a year. Man. Okay. And I, I know that he, I know for a fact that he, he generated multiple six figures Mm -hmm. from the copy I had written. And yet when I asked him for the balance of the payment, he said, well, a contract says I pay the balance when I'm satisfied. And I'm like, what you you're clearly satisfied. You're running the copy, you're making money. And I checked over a year later, he was still running the copy I wrote for him. Yeah. And, and uh, he eventually came back to me and wanted me to write another project for him. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, I'm not writing for you anymore. You ripped me off on the first project. Exactly. But in his mind, somehow I would want to come back and write copy for him. Yeah. Why Why wouldn't you, Ryan? I mean, come on. Don't be ungrateful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Man. Yeah. Okay. That was bad. That was bad. Um, did you, like, while you, I think you mentioned that you were excited about this project and... Was it because you were going to get paid like good money? Like, was he like a well-known uh, guy in the industry? Like, why? yeah, at, yeah. at the time, um, he was one of the only guys in the industry doing a book writing program Yeah, for, for professionals, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. as a, as an authority piece to make money. And um, so at the time he had pretty high visibility so I think it was in my mind, it was the quality of the client mm. um, and uh, the fee was decent. It, was, it wasn't the best fee I'd ever gotten, but it was a, a good solid copywriting fee. So the money was good. Um, uh, and I think uh, there was probably potential for additional work there, um, yeah. which, you know, when you're, it's always appealing for a copywriter who's going from gig to gig. You know, yeah. like if, if there's more work, then great. You know, if it's a good client, great. Um, so I think those were the reasons. I think also the subject matter was interesting to me, uh, being able to go through his program and write bullets. And, you know, it was just, it it appealed to my interests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it a coaching program, an info product? Because you mentioned bullets. So do you, what was it? What was the offer? Wow. It was, it was a hybrid. So, uh, okay. there were yeah. like two massive binders of, of, uh, yeah. of, it was essentially transcripts, right? He hadn't written mm -hmm. it. It was just interviews that he had done or, or talks he, he had done that were transcribed. And this is back in the day before everything was digital. So you got these giant two and a half inch binders stuffed with 500 yeah. pages of transcripts in each one. And then there was a coaching component as well. So I think it was like a eight week or 12 week um mm -hmm. coaching program where there were weekly calls to keep people gotcha. on track and stuff yeah yeah gotcha gotcha okay i mean the transcript is like very smart idea to create like content nowadays like you don't have to write just like a speak on your phone yeah. and you have it like transcribed uh okay so one quick so i i wonder like did anything that he do or say like was there like any red flags before you actually got the project? Okay. Did you have like any second thoughts while you were working with him? Like what was like the experience like? 
overall, I think it was good until after I turned the copy in. Um, I think I did have a concern about the payment schedule because I just thought, you know, it, it's a pain to send out three or four invoices for one project, you know, and keep track of three or four checks in the mail. You know, back then it was, people weren't sending wires and ACHs as much. It was usually a check. Yeah. And I didn't really want to take PayPal because the fee, the fee, you know, would chew out, you know, 200 to $500 of a, of a project, yeah. which is, you know, that's significant when you got kids and raising a family. I'm like, dude, I, a couple of trips to the grocery store or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that was, that was the main red flag, honestly, was just the contract, uh, itself, the payment schedule. Mm -hmm. And, um, and from that point forward, I made a mental note to never agree to any kind of complicated fee schedule ever. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, there are only three options, paying full up front, 50, 50. So half up front, half on, uh, completion. When I say completion, when, well, usually for me, it's when the, the copy is edited and turned in, oh, yeah. um, so I give, I give two rounds of edits and I write into my contract that they must provide feedback on the copy within uh, 30 days. And if they don't, then the balance of the project is automatically due. Mm -hmm. um, and so that prevents us uh, getting stuck in a pattern of, you know, they're just putting off the edits or putting off the yeah. feedback to withhold the, the payment. Um, and then the final is just getting paid at the end of the project, which um, if it was a one-off project, obviously I would never agree to do all the work and then get paid at the end. Mm. But when it comes to say retainer con retainer agreements, um, you're either um, billing for the month ahead or you're billing in arrears mm -hmm. for the month that you just completed. Yeah, And um, I don't really like owing debt. And so if yeah, you bill for the month ahead, you owe 30 days of work, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so I prefer to work with a trustworthy client where I'm getting auto paid for the month that I just completed. Yeah. And then if they, if for some reason they let me go or terminate the contract, I don't owe them anything, you know? Mm. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, so I guess like another question on what you said about the fee structure, um, have you ever had like a moving forward clients who requested like a bizarre payment structure and how did you handle how did you handle this how did you like quote unquote put them on their in their place say no this is the way we're gonna do this and yeah how did you deal with this if it happened I yeah honestly I haven't really encountered it since then um okay. usually nice. with payment, I just say, you know, here, here are my terms. I require a 50% deposit to begin the project. Once I receive the payment, that's when the project starts. Mm -hmm. If you delay payment, you can delay the deadline, right? That's fine. Um, yeah. Because sometimes you agree to a deadline and then they don't pay you for two weeks. You're like, dude, yeah. you know, I can't stick to that deadline anymore because you pay me. Yeah. Um, but usually you just tell them your terms and they're cool with it, you know, um, Mm -hmm. I haven't had too much pushback on that. And maybe, maybe that situation was unique to that client and maybe it was unique to being a young copywriter and maybe he saw yeah. somebody he could take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, I'm guessing that he probably had other copywriters who agreed to this payment uh, structure. So yeah, I mean, he was just on his default mode. He was like, okay, this is what I like. I'm going to suggest the same to Ryan. And yeah, he just basically took advantage of you this way. Yeah. 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 All right. That was cool. That was cool. So yeah, I want to move on to the next story, uh, which is like, I see copy by committee. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's nice. This is a referral from um, a big name copywriter, Doberman Dan. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, Doberman Dan. Gallipu. He referred this. Yeah, Gallipu. He he referred this client to me. Um, he was also doing a, a project for the client, and um, that was a situation where you know they they told me what they wanted, and mm -hmm. I I wrote the copy, I turned it in, and then 
I haven't reviewed all the details. It, it, there were a lot of details involved, but initially their feedback was, I say there, I should say his feedback was positive. And mm -hmm. by him, I mean the guy who was my main point of contact. He was one of the owners in the company. And um, he's the guy I hi uh, who hired me. Um, he's the only person I had interfaced with the entire time, right? Yeah. And so I turned the copy into him. Initially, the feedback is positive. But then he said, uh, but I need to get feedback from other team members. And I went, wait, what? Mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> and so then he goes and he sends the copy to everybody in the company, including a warehouse manager. <laughs> and and the warehouse yeah. manager didn't like the copy. And some other people, you know, they were nitpicking. Well, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't, you know, I just don't know. Yeah. And and so then it, they compiled it all into this document and everything. And then they said, um, one of the things they said is I had used a, um, a negative lead. Okay. So like a, a do not do this kind mm -hmm. of lead. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things they didn't like, was, well, we don't like this, this negative, um, angle, you know, yeah. so this negative they beginning. Be, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, ah, that, that actually is the reason why I changed how I worked with clients where I always write the lead first and get the approval. I get approval yeah. for the headline and lead first and then yeah. write the rest of the copy so that yeah. you don't run into that problem. But anyway, you know, so they had all this feedback in a document and it was all, you know, there was, they were, there were contradictions. Of course. Um, yeah. There was, you know, that wasn't streamlined. It was just like, okay, so who am I writing for here? The warehouse manager, mm. the, you know, the, the secretary, the yeah. owner, like, how do I make sense of all this? Um, so what initially looked like a positive result when I turned in the copy um, turned into, yeah, just kind of a, a circus. And yeah, that situation did not, um, did not end well. Um, they were obviously unhappy and, you know, I felt like I had done what I was contracted to do. Of course. Um, yeah. And felt like I, at that time, I couldn't afford to just work for free trying to make them happy. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was just kind of an unfortunate situation. Um, that was one of the early projects where I asked for my entire fee up front and they paid it. Okay. So I was, I was definitely, uh, safe in that regard. Um, if I had, uh, only gotten 50% up front, I yeah. probably would not have been paid the remaining 50% or I would have had to work for free, work for free, you know, for a period of time, until everyone until, is happy. Yeah. Till everyone was happy. And then they were like, okay, we're going to pay you the, the balance. Um, if memory serves, uh, Dan never made a penny. He got ripped oh. off. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. No. So I, um, I surprisingly came out the end of the other end of that deal. Um, relatively whole and intact, even though it was a bad experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that company is still around. That company is uh, doing really well. Um, they, they, um, they do not do direct response in the way that you and I do it. Um, okay. They are, yes. they are very uh, brand image driven mm. company. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Were they like this when you guys uh, started working with them or no, 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 they were more direct response. Okay. Yeah. Well, they were, I'm not sure how new the company was at that point, but they were trying to break into the U S market and uh, with their product. And I, I'm not sure if they had retained Dan for some consulting or what it, what it was, but they were going to go and try the direct response approach to okay. selling their supplements. So I think it was pretty clear after, you know, I turned in the copy that they were not really on board with the direct response approach. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you mentioned, like Dave, so far, something that I forgot to ask, like in the previous story is like, Okay, you have like this bad experience with a client, like 
do you actually reach out to your network and say yo like dan ben whatever like i had this experience with xyz client uh, just keep it in mind so that you don't like get hurt by them like how do you guys approach this yeah i mean i would i was always willing to share names uh yeah. just privately when yeah, of course like if you and i were in a private conversation and you say mm -hmm. hey hey ryan here what are some cop um clients you think are not good to work with i could list some some of those for you right yeah yeah and you know who are some clients that you um, are good to work with well maybe i wouldn't share those because i don't mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't want to lose the client yeah that's very smart <laughs> that's very smart i respect that yeah yeah you don't want the clients to be bombarded with dms yeah yeah and, and uh i actually figured this out a long time ago i never posted uh current client testimonials on my website yeah that's smart yeah i wait i i, I used to or in the early days i did and then i went wait, okay. why am i doing this i was like i copywriters are reading my blog all the time all i have to do is go to my testimonial page and they can try to poach my my clients <laughs> exactly yeah yeah i tried to do this like when i i think like a few years back i was reading like carlene angley cole's like testimonials and i was like making a list because she worked with supplement companies and i'm like yeah i mean yeah i mean they're they're good they seem to be good prospects i mean why not try and reach out to them for email like okay carlene sure. does sales letters so why not yeah yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, I mean, after this happened, like, did you also uh, tweak your contract to say that, yo, I mean, I'm only going to get feedback from one person? Like, okay, how did you protect yourself from future problems after this story? Yeah, um, I, I don't think that I changed my contract, but I did make sure upfront during negotiations to say uh, to the person, I would say like, so who is, who's my main point of contact mm -hmm. and who is the person providing feedback to me? Because, yeah. and I would make clear, you know, that's fine if you have two or three people on your team who want to read the copy and give feedback, but I need one person yeah. to make sense of that, condense it down into one set of feedback that's not yeah. contradictory and let me know what that is um, because I can't be taking instructions from three different people. Um, and so I just make that clear up front. They go, Oh yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll make sure that, you know, the feedback is consolidated or whatever. So. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, now that you mentioned, I have like a funny story. I actually was hired by an agency to write some emails, uh, Ben Settle style for a, big company in the outsourcing space so what happened is i wrote the emails the agency owner saw them he left them we passed them on to the copy chief the copy chief yeah i mean said okay good okay great and the way the deal was structured was that i had to deliver like if i was going to write like okay 13 emails i was going to deliver let's say 10 on week number one, 10 on week number two, and then two, 10 on week number three. So okay. we're doing fine up till week two. And then I'm on week three, writing the rest of the emails. And I get the message from the agency owner telling me, yo, I mean, we have a problem. And what, turn, what, what, uh, what happened was that the CEO saw the emails that were approved by the agency owner and the copy chief. And he said, Look, yo, I mean, I don't like those. Like, write them again. I'm like, come on, guys. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? Like, why do I hear about this now? And what's even funnier is that I got a Google Doc with lots of comments. And there were also some comments on, about the subject lines from a person who I didn't know who they were. <laughs> and as it turned <laughs> out, they were like the email list manager or the person who loaded the emails saying, oh, no, those subject lines are like too long. We need to shorten them. And I'm like, come on. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah, uh, that's that's yeah. terrible. Yeah, that was like very <laughs> bad. That was very bad. Uh, likely, like the agency owner was like very understanding. He was like, so look, man, sorry, like I'm willing to pay you extra money for your effort. Because, yeah, I mean, they changed the, yeah, I mean, they approved the emails, so it's not fair to you. 
but it was like funny and a little bit frustrating at the same time yeah absolutely yeah yeah but, i'm glad it worked out it seems yeah, like it yeah. worked out anyway yeah it worked out but it's just like it left like you know what a bitter taste so i'm yeah. like yeah i wouldn't like to work with them again and good yeah yeah there, there are lots of clients out there Okay, so want to move on to the next story, which is selling tens of thousands of supplements, or bottles of ah, supplements. yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so obviously, supplement client. Um, they retain. They hired me for a few different one-off projects, um, long-form sales letters uh, that I wrote, um, and one of those apparently just hit big time. Nice and. I was getting updates. Um, uh, I heard heard some updates. I can't even remember how I heard them. I was gonna quickly search my uh, profile on Facebook because I wrote about it at the time. Um, bottles. Ah, there it is. One of my uh, the twenty seventeen February twenty seventh twenty seventeen. One of my sales letters has sold twelve thousand bottles of a supplement this month alone. Nice. And, and then I think I had a comment at the bottom. I thought it had gone, that number had gone up or I posted an update about it. Um, yeah. So the math on it is they probably had done 500 to 600 K gross. Nice. In one month, <laughs> but that, uh, I don't, I don't remember where I posted the update, but um, I did post a follow up to it because the number went up, mm -hmm. and um, I was just like, oh my gosh, like the you know, I didn't have a royalty attached to it or anything, so it was just <laughs> yeah. kind of you feel great that you know, like oh, a winner, but I don't, I don't get any benefit from that, you know. Yeah. Um, they probably paid uh paid for the copy. I I think that was probably like a. I don't know, like an $8,000 project or something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, this and money, like, I guess like back then, but if you didn't get the royalty, yeah, it sucks. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, how come like you didn't ask for a royalty? Like, weren't you aware that this was like an option? Like, was the client negative? Like what were. Uh, they didn't, they don't, they're not set up to pay royalties. I don't think they wanted to pay a royalty. Um, and, um, they're not a private, you know, privately owned company that doesn't work with copywriters often. So here, here's what I found. So what I found was um, if you're going to get a royalty, it really only works if you're getting paid, uh, if you're working with a company that hires and pay, uh, hires copywriters and pays royalties on a regular mm -hmm. basis, of course. right? Yeah. If they're not used to paying royalties, yeah. They don't know, they don't have the infrastructure set up to handle it yeah. Yeah. and they don't, they don't know what to do. Um, so there are other ways to set up uh, performance bonuses and things like that. But even, even when I worked uh, with a, a publisher, a financial newsletter publisher that paid royalties and I had a control there, I still had to chase my royalty because oh, they really didn't not. pay it. Hmm. They didn't pay it. And I went back to them and I said, Hey, why haven't I gotten, you know, it's 30, it's over 30 days past the end of the quarter. Why haven't I gotten my royalty? And they, and they said, Oh, you wrote that letter. I was like, check your email. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, come on, man. <laughs> we sent the royalty check to a different copywriter. <laughs> you might... A different copywriter. Yeah. So they paid, they paid me that one royalty and then they continued to run it through the, through the fall, another three months. They never paid me again on the royalty. So uh, it's yeah, like, sucks. so then I'm like, okay, I guess I'm done working with you guys. Um, yeah. I did, I think three, three or four letters for them. And one of them became a control. Um, nice. Okay. And, and then they, you know, obviously, you know, stiffed me on some royalties, but. Yeah, this sucks. Uh, you know, now that you mentioned this, like, do you have like any way of knowing whether you're going to deal with a good client and i mean good client can mean like different things but can you know beforehand that you know, i mean the client i'm gonna work with they're paying uh for they're paying royalties and they're consistent with them like i guess like one one option is asking other copywriters but have you found like 
a way that you can g guess if they're gonna be okay that's it's really tough man yeah. um yeah I just totally because agree. even even good companies fall yeah. on hard times and so um uh this might be a good time to to do the last story on my list mm. yeah um because it kind of ties in yeah the writing space ads for seminars yeah 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 so i'll give you an example um because you're, you're like, how can you tell, you know, I mean, one way is to see, you know, have they hired other copywriters in the past? And yeah, do you know any of those copywriters? Do those copywriters, you know, can you reach out to them? Can you ask some questions? Um, and today, so, we're so connected today, like back in 2008 and nine, I mean, social yeah. media was kind of just in its infancy, like barely <laughs> getting yeah, started. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you couldn't go online and just like search up companies and find other copywriters and, you know, um, so anyhow, um, this company hired me and I was writing, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, something seminars. Um, uh, but basically it was this business model of run a newspaper ad for a free seminar, get people into the room, mm -hmm. you know, give them some information and then pitch them on some sort of program that costs yeah couple thousand dollars. I think at the time they were like $2,000 programs and, oh, right. you know, Hey, we'll, we'll teach you, we'll teach you real estate investing. That was, you know, Robert Sheeman, uh, real estate was the, he was the one I wrote most of my copy for was Robert Sheeman. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'd write these newspaper ads and I would invoice them and they would pay me. And then they're like, Hey, we need more newspaper ads. I'd write them. Mm -hmm. I'd invoice them. They pay me. I think they paid me, um, three, four, five times something like that yeah. um, over the course of a year. So you just think, oh, they're, they're, they're a good client. You know, mm -hmm. I think yeah. originally I had been billing 50, 50 on the first project I did for them. And then after that went well, they would yeah. say, Hey, we need another ad. It didn't take me that long to write it. So I just wrote it, turned it in and then invoiced them, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was great until it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> they, one of my invoices went unpaid um, my main point of contact, I couldn't, I couldn't reach him, you mm -hmm. know, didn't, didn't know what was going on. Had to, just had no idea. And then one day I get this, this big old pamphlet in the mail, you know, like a big old manila envelope stuffed with mm -hmm. paper. And I'm like, what the yeah. heck is this? You know, I open it up and it's, it's like a 50 page document of bankruptcy court filing. Damn. against the company that i had been writing for oh man right? yeah and it, it was a big it was a big company they were running they were running newspaper ads all over the u.s they're yeah, flying yeah. people do running all these seminars so you know who knows their overhead was high something happened they got into debt i don't know what they did but um yeah i'm like what they went bankrupt like what's going on so then i crazy yeah i i'm, I'm flipping through and it's like has a list of creditors and i'm like oh there i am Gambit yeah. LLC, you know, listed as a creditor with the amount of my yeah. invoice. So I was like, oh, well, at least I'm, at least they didn't forget about me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was, that was a weird one. Cause um, obviously I never expected that to happen. I think part of it was uh, the, the real estate crash happened. Yeah. Right. Mm, yeah. And so they're running newspaper ads to pitch real estate investing. Yeah. Bad timing. And so, yeah market the market just shifted totally against them and they probably yeah, had pre-bought all this ad space and pre-booked all these hotel rooms and yeah. they couldn't fill them because people were panicked they were losing money they're going you know people are going to foreclosure so yeah. um they uh i did end up getting um these monthly payments for something like five or six months it was, it was basically they took my fee i think they chopped it down to like 60 percent and then okay. they divided it into like five payments. And so, oh, okay. yeah. So I got these small, I got some small checks for like a few months. I was like, ah, eh, it's, I, you know, at least I got some of it back. <laughs> yeah. That was something. Yeah. Yeah. Man, crazy. Yeah. I mean, timing is like so important, man. Um, I remember like, I became like very interested in financial copy, like uh, almost like a year ago. And I was like yeah, researching the niche. I was, I even bought like a few products about it. And I started like reaching out to some of 
CEOs of those publishing companies. And then boom, I mean, something happened and I heard that Agora fired like a two third of their people. And I'm like, man, that's yeah. bad. Yeah. And it felt like, I don't know, my like dominoes falling, like it felt like a really bad time for anything that has to do with that had to do with financial. And I'm like, nah, nah, like horrible timing, horrible timing. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and that's another case of, I mean, you could be working for a big company that's well known and very credible and pays their yeah. copywriters and uh, you know, just bad timing, you know, things happen. Can you imagine launching um, a financial package the week that the coronavirus lockdowns yeah. happened, you yeah. know, it's like, yeah, if, yeah. if you disaster, a, a yeah, disaster, if you had a bullish package, yeah. the week that that happened, it would have flopped yeah. big time. Exactly. 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 All, all those like months of preparation, like okay, putting like the presentations <laughs> together and everything. Yeah. Really going to suck. Uh, <laughs> do you remember, by the way, how did you get like this client, uh, Robert Seaman? Oh man, I think they came through my website, honestly. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, those are like good. How was how's like has how has your experience be with being with those type of clients who come through your, your website? Like are they like easier to close? Like what's been your experience? Yeah. With those clients. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they come through a sales page on my site, then yeah, they're they're generally easier to close because they read your copy and then they go, oh, I liked your copy. So that's yeah. why I want to hire you, right? Yeah. Um, mm. You know, it persuaded me. So I think you can persuade, you know, mm. the people I'm trying to sell to. So I think it does kind of, I mean, I, it's probably not quite as good as a, as a strong referral, oh, but, right. um, but it's, but it's still pretty good. Um, I, one of my early clients that I got, um, uh, he came through my website through a paid ad because I was running okay. paid traffic through Google mm -hmm. AdWords at the time. Mm -hmm. He paid me $10,000 up front for a nice. sales letter. Nice. And then he put me on retainer and the retainer was uh, 3% of his monthly recurring revenues. Okay. And, and so good. I got me. Yeah. Yes. So I got paid about, um, it was about $1,500 a month, $1,500 a month. And my job was to just write a couple of emails a month and, um, occasionally help out with like a one page magazine ad that was running in a, like a, a stock magazine, something like that. Yeah. And obviously if his revenues went up, you know, I made, I made a little more if, of if course, it was a bad yeah. month and it went down a little bit, but, um, yeah. Yeah, he paid me for I think about three years. Nice. Um, yeah, the only the only downside of it was, um, you know, it was stock trading software. Yeah. And during those three years, there were no improvements. There was nothing new to write about. It was the same software month in, month out, month in, month out. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was just at a certain point, I felt like I was running out of ideas. Yeah. For how, how for how to sell this thing, um, and you know now if you like if you know you know fast forward 15, 12, 15 years since I worked with them, um, if you hired me again, I'd probably have a lot more ideas now because of know, course yeah you know I've been been in the industry for so long and yeah I've gotten I've gotten better and you know mm -hmm. um, yeah but but back then I felt like yeah it's it's time for us to. I think I thought personally that he would benefit from a new copywriter coming in and trying mm. to, to take over. So yeah. it was mutual. We both had really positive, you know, positive things to say about each other. There's nothing bad there. That's so. great. Yeah. And he also came like, okay, from a paid dad, which is like great. I mean, I would yeah. expect like, do you remember what like your funnel looked back then? So it was like a, a Google ad to what a sales page to a lead magnet. What did it look like? Uh, it was literally just a, a Google a Google ad, yeah, to a long form lander with the yeah. form at the bottom. That's okay. It. Okay, yeah, that's cool. So, and you just basically did you you were selling people. It's not like you were teaching them anything, right? No, I wasn't teaching. I was just selling yeah, them on my approach selling. to copy. Yeah, that's, that's great. It. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, this goes against the grain of like, oh, you need to somehow like teach people you need to educate them so that they know what they're like 
so they can see what you look like or they can understand like your approach but yeah that's cool yeah yeah uh, how like what kind of keywords like okay worked for you like back then like did you no a different question like did you position yourself as a copywriter back then or did you have like a different positioning um i position i positioned myself as an honest direct response copywriter okay. without without using the word honest okay yeah okay so i didn't claim oh i'm an honest copy but that was kind of the overarching idea Mm -hmm. was to kind of say like, look, I'll, you know, I'm going to sell what you have, but I'm not going to make false claims about it. And, okay. you know, and, and so that was kind of the angle on it. I bid on keywords like direct response, copywriter, yeah. um, advertising, copywriter, ad copywriter, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. So that was like a problem that uh, customers had back then. So that they hired like a copywriter and they were making a bunch of stuff that made them look back. So it was like a problem. Yeah. The, well, the problem was uh, hype. So yeah, people, yeah. a lot of people were looking for a copywriter who could sell something without, without the hype, you know? Yeah. So, so you position yourself as an anti-hype, honest mm. copywriter. And that kind of resonated with a, you know, a certain audience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you know, I mean, I guess on the on the bright side too, if those clients come to you, they're also not going to push for mm -hmm. you know unethical things or push for you to yeah to exaggerate and you know all that. So it you know typically worked out well. You know, the clients I got through advertising, I stopped because uh, AdWords banned me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I had I had I had bought the this info product called the Google the Google AdWords method or the Google method, something like that. All it was, was arbitrage. So yeah. you just, you, you just found an affiliate product on ClickBank. Mm -hmm. You used your affiliate link. You wrote a Google ad, you bid on it. They clicked through your affiliate link straight to the, to the sales page. Made, That's it. You made some money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the idea was that you made money. I actually did not make money. I lost money using that method. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, what I did was completely within Google AdWords terms of use. It was, it was not, it was allowed. I All didn't right. break any rules, but then later months later, I think it was like six months later, they said, and this is long after I had stopped doing it. I had mm -hmm. tried it for a period of about two weeks. You know, right. I was like, Oh, let's see if this works. Yeah. It didn't really work. I don't want to, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, then they said, uh, yeah, this is against our terms of use. Oh, and by the way, we're going to retroactively apply it on any AdWords account that has ever done uh, this. Man, that sucks. And yeah. then they and then they banned me. I was like, guys, like Come I on. paid you over ten thousand over ten thousand dollars in ad ex ad expense. Yeah, I did this for two weeks when it was totally fine, and now you're banning me because it's like saying, hey, we're gonna um, change the speed limit on this road to 30 miles an hour. Oh, but we clocked you a year ago going 60. Yeah. So now we're going to give you a ticket for going 30 over. I'm like, no, 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 that's not how it works. <laughs> oh man. And the funny thing is that I think you probably kept the ad, the ad group, whatever it is that you have created, you kept on your account, but if you had deleted it, maybe you wouldn't have a problem, right? I don't know. They, um, they actually store your credit card numbers and things like that. So, uh, okay. I know I could start an AdWords account today, but I would have to use a different Gmail yeah. and a different credit and a different credit card number. Yeah. If I, if I used a new Gmail account and I used my old credit card number, yeah. Banned instantly. Banned. Crazy man. Crazy. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I said, screw those guys. I've never spent a dollar with AdWords since. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's worked fine, so it's good. Oh, and that's nice. that might be short sighted. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's going to depend. Like, okay, you're already getting clients, you have like a full roster, from what I understand. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I think like it's very hard to actually find some type of clients. Maybe I'm wrong, but for example, if you work. If you primarily want to work as an email list manager for big supplement companies, I'm not sure if those people will look at Google for no. information. Yeah. 
No, so, yeah. not yeah. these days. Yeah, not these days. Yeah. How does it work? Like it's, I'm guessing like primarily word of mouth. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's reputation. It's word of mouth. Um, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's visibility. It's a little bit visibility in the market. You know, it's it's going mm -hmm. to marketing events. Yeah. Um, you know, affiliate summit West or traffic and conversion, right? Traffic yeah. and TNC. Um, Thank you. yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Right. You know, four rooms, mastermind, um, there are a variety of different events you could attend, but, um, yeah, it's a combination of, of those things. I think it's, it's reputation, re connections and referrals and mm -hmm. visibility, you know, showing yeah. up and, and shaking hands and talking and getting to know each other. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing builds trust faster than face-to-face -face interaction with yeah. a potential client. Yeah. I've heard this like so many times and I'm really like cursing the fact that I live in Greece because tickets are like <laughs> very expensive. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Uh, you talk about like, do you go, like if you, you mentioned like, okay, different methods, like, and I know that we have like another story to talk about the mastermind, but that's interesting to me. So I'm just going to shamelessly like ask you for my own benefit. Uh, do you okay. find, do you find like, what do you believe has worked like the best for you? Like out of all the methods that you have used to get clients? Um, I, I really do think it's, it's a uh, live events. Um, all right yeah that 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 formed the foundation of my copywriting business back between mm -hmm. between i went freelance in 2005 mm -hmm. um so basically between about 2005 and 2010 you know attending events was a, a big component of mm -hmm. how i got my clients um and you know it may be different today so i won't i won't sit here and claim that you can do the same thing in 2023 as you could do in 2005 yeah but there was an event i went to i believe it was big seminar of 2006 mm -hmm. okay this is back when armin armin morin was uh doing his big seminar usually twice a year i believe uh fall and spring and they um at this one particular event armin morin said hey all the all the copywriters in the room stand up oh, and so nice. yeah we stood up and um armin goes okay you see him and him and him and, and her and you know like mm -hmm. next break i want you to introduce yourself get that person's card and if you need copy hire them you know like nice like you need you need to so it's like I'm the copywriter. So then all of a sudden I had like people near me. Yeah. You know, all, oh, now I'm, now I'm some big, you know, big guy. Like it's, I instantly had some of the credibility that Armin had just given us. Of course. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so from that one event, I have traced over a hundred thousand dollars in fees. Nice. So, Great. so, I mean, that's, that's significant. I had a client who hired me out of that event. Um, who paid me uh, over on, I, I was on retainer for over five years. Oh, great. Or, nice. Like around five, around four or five years, I think. Yeah. So, um, so that was fantastic. Uh, I went to other events. Uh, I went to an event that Alex Mendozian hosted. It was a customer appreciation event. So it was mm -hmm. a little bit smaller, but um, I didn't know that Alex was going to do this, but he said, Hey, Ryan, stand up. And, and I had, I had written copy for him. And he goes, yeah. you know, Ryan has written multiple pieces for me. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had done it at a discounted rate just to get Alex's testimonial. Nice. Yeah. And to get, to get access, you know, to him and to his network. And so he said, Hey, if anybody needs copy, hire Ryan. That's and great. So yeah. immediately after that, this guy comes up to me and that began right after. So whatever, I don't know what I spent back then, probably around $700, $800 all in to yeah. fly to San Francisco from Denver, get mm -hmm. a hotel room, get some meals. You know, this is years ago. So prices were lower. Of course. But I mean, immediately it's 10 X ROI, right? Yeah. It's, it's a 10 X ROI. You show up and then boom, $8,000 contract. Um, yeah. 
So those have always been the best for me. And sometimes, um, you know, it doesn't produce like right after the event. Okay. Uh, but sometimes, you know, three, six months down the road, somebody you met goes, hey, Ryan, remember we met at so-and-so? I was interested in talking to you about, you know, XYZ project. Yeah. Like, okay, sweet. Let's let's talk. Um, so it's, it's all about planting seeds, you know, yeah. consistently. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it's kind of like farming and then just waiting for some of those seeds to come up. Yeah, nice. And how do you actually like stay in touch with those people? Like, okay, do you add them on Facebook and you just chat whenever you have the opportunity? Do you have like a system or is or are you more relaxed with it? Um, I'm a little more relaxed with it, partially okay. because I've had, um, you know, the last few years, I've, I've really had too much on my plate most of the time. Poor so, you, poor you, poor Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> poor Ryan. Feel bad for me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just that, you know, I, I, I've had so much to do that it's like, I don't have time to, to sit there and work a, a follow-up system trying to get in business yeah. because even if they said, Hey, we want you to do this. I'm like, Oh, great. I don't even have the time to do it. So yeah, makes um, sense. I've had to actually push off clients and um, refer those clients to other people Mm -hmm. um, just because I, I just, I really didn't have the bandwidth and I also didn't even know when I would have the bandwidth. So yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, I, I don't want you to have to sit around and wait for me. So here, let me give you a referral. Oh, right. Yeah. Perfect. Makes sense, man. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Okay. And since you also mentioned masterminds, like okay, previously, yeah, I mean, we have like another story, which is like about you creating a mastermind with some like great like guys in the copywriting space so let's talk about this yeah okay so um man when ben settle first came on the scene he wrote this long long life story um uh, i don't think you can even get it anymore but i remember reading that and i was just riveted by it it was all right nice it was yeah it was like almost like in chapters and you had to click continue and you like went to a new page oh and nice then, and then yeah. And I read through that. I was like, dude, I got to read this. This is so good. And I read through the whole thing. And um, uh, the funny part about it was is like just that one piece elevated Ben in my mind. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, but he was like just starting out. Like he was, mm -hmm. I, I, I won't say he was a, a nobody, but he, he and I were in the same boat. Like very few people knew us at that time. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, so I reached out to him and um, made a connection with him. Um, and then I had also made other connections. So like Ray Edwards, he got started as a copywriter a little bit before me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And and he he and I met in person, I think, in 2006 in Denver at a small live oh. event mm -hmm. in Denver. And um, so we met at that time. He was just coming out of the radio industry. Um Later, later, he told me, he said of all the guys who were there, all the, the new copywriters, he's like, I thought you were the one least likely to make it. I thought, man, this guy's <laughs> going to get eaten. He's going to get eaten alive. He's too nice. <laughs> <laughs> proved him wrong, baby. You proved him wrong. Yeah. I got that cold blooded killer in me, but I just keep it, you know, just keep it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I knew, um, I knew Ray, I knew uh, Ben, and then another copywriter at that time who's who was more well known back in the early 2000s, but not so much today. It was John Angelacci. Um, yeah. He's often gone by John Angel because because mm -hmm. his last name is hard to pronounce uh, for some people. Um, you should you should read mine for the last name. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard you say it. Chatsunakalu. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was so bad. <laughs> Tatsina Kalu? Kalau? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, but uh, it's Hadzi Nikolau. Hadzi Nikolau. Hadzi Nikolau. Yeah, kind of. I'm going to tell you like, a quick side story. Um, I had I was like in a program with Kevin Rogers, his first iteration of Escape Velocity. And okay. I was one of the members there, and we had like our first call. Uh, Kevin was done with the with the presentation and, he was, and it was like time of questions I raised my hand 
And she was like, oh, photos, yeah, okay. I've been preparing for a week now to, I've been practicing for a week now to try and pronounce your name. <laughs> <laughs> And, That's and yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, she said it's for this cut the blue, and I'm like, no, no, sorry, Kevin. She was like, no, he, and you can see the disappointment on his face. Oh like, yeah, he's oh, so man. sad. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, you all, yeah, John and Galachi, yeah, yeah, J John and Galachi. So, and Galachi, um, yeah. I, you know, I thought, hey, you know, we're all working copywriters, you know like would you guys be interested in us you know getting together yeah you know, once a month or once every two months you know just whenever and just talk copy let's just talk shop and see what's going on and swap yeah. stories and mm -hmm. hey what are you seeing that's working and you know yada yada so um so yeah we we i ran that and ben agreed ray agreed john agreed and we would just pop on and and talk and it was great you know we just have that had that camaraderie um mm -hmm. that lasted i don't know three three four years maybe um and at the end uh i forget if it was ben or ray ben or ray invited daniel levis into the group mm -hmm. i was like yeah sure man. i mean guy worked with clayton make peace and you know so so daniel joined us often there for i think one or two years at the end at the very end uh david deutsch joined mm -hmm. us for uh, a handful of calls. Um, and honestly, the reason why that fell apart is, um, well, I mean, probably a variety of reasons, mm -hmm. but probably one of the biggest ones was me just feeling unworthy almost because, oh, really? okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I felt like I was, yeah, you know, I was working copier and I was doing well. I was making six figures a year, but I felt like I was nowhere near where these guys, what these guys were doing, you know, mm. and like that felt like they were advancing and I was just kind of staying at the same level. Yeah. Um, and um, so, yeah, just kind of, I just kind of let it fall away, unfortunately, but um, you know, it's all good. Mm. Yeah. So you basically like self-sabotage. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, if you had a gay, okay, I mean, you're not guess, but okay, what would you say were like okay, some of the biggest benefits that you got like from all this, like from the mastermind? Um, I, I couldn't give you specific lessons per se, but yeah, yeah, no, um, we would we would do we would do copy critiques for each other. Mm, so yeah. you know, we would we would say like, hey, what do you think of this headline? Or what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And so, um a lot of times they would be able to spot something in my copy that I couldn't see and vice yeah. versa. Like, I, you know, I was able to spot things in their copy and say, well, mm. why don't you add, why don't you add this in here? Why don't you push that down and, you know, expand this and, you know, mm -hmm. so I think that was probably one of the most, that was one of the most practical benefits. But I yeah. think the other thing is that um, you just, you realize that you're not alone. Right. Yeah. So, That's important. so, yeah. So when you're, when you're sitting there and you're going through this bad experience with a client and you think you're the only person on earth who's ever had to deal with this, mm -hmm. like you find yeah. out pretty quickly, oh, it's not just me. Okay. So even these guys who I look up to, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're dealing with some issues too, you know, like, um, and so that part I think is important, um, just for, uh, yeah, just feeling good about where you're at in your career and knowing that mm -hmm. problems are just kind of, they're just going to happen. You know, you're yes, not, of course. you're not going to be able to avoid them entirely. You'll get better at avoiding them, but <laughs> yeah, still yeah. Happen. yeah, no, that's very good. Like, okay, and my question is like, do you have like a similar environment like today? And if so, what does it look like? Like for you to have to get basically having like other copywriters in your corner, like, do you have something like that today? Um, not specifically, but, um, now that I run an agency, uh, yeah. with my, my business partner, Justin, uh, we have, we have a team call every Wednesday. Okay. So Justin and I get on the phone with, um, our team, our team members, and we've got an agenda and we go through like any issues that are, that are happening. Uh, we talk about any offers or email copy that's working really well share split test results. You know, we, we do a variety of things like that. Um, we, uh, we have just literally 
yesterday morning. No, no, I'm sorry. Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, me and Justin hopped on with two other guys in a, in a different company who also do list management. And we are once a month talking about deliverability, mm -hmm. um, you know, how to deal with certain issues that may come up, anything yeah. that we're learning. So we're, we've agreed that we're going to kind of share information and kind of help each other uh, both may, you know, get better and maintain our edge. So, um, mm. so I guess the answer is not so much with the copywriting side of things, but more yeah. with email deliverability yeah, and that kind of stuff. So, all right, that's cool. And since you mentioned like, okay, the agency, would you like to share a little bit more about like, okay, what do you guys do, who you work with? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the company is called Upsender. I think you mentioned that at the beginning, upsender.com. Mm -hmm. Um, it, there's not much on the website, honestly. Um, just kind of a almost like a business card or brochure or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what we do is we manage email lists for clients in the health and weight loss space. Mm -hmm. um, we are open to getting into a different niche um, at some point, either like mm -hmm. financial or survival or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. If we feel like it's there's some good synergy there. Uh, basically our role is to make sure that the client is doing best practices when it comes to emailing mm -hmm. and setting up their accounts to where they're getting deliverability and making sure their emails are hitting the primary tab in Gmail, mm -hmm. um, solving any kind of issues with spam or, uh, solving issues with emails going into promotions, mm -hmm. um, and the primary way that we, we make money for our clients is through affiliate promotions. So, All right. yeah. so our clients often will have like one or two front end offers that are working really well. Yeah. And so they're getting consistent traffic, you know, affiliate traffic, paid traffic, whatever. And so buyers are coming on to the email list every day. You know, yeah. we're talking like 50 to a hundred plus buyers a day. Mm -hmm. And often they don't have much of a back end. So, um, so they've got one funnel that's working really well, like front end product and upsells, and then they jump dump onto a, a, an email list. And then now what do we sell them? Yeah. And some of the clients don't want, they don't want to be in the supplement business. They don't want to be in the coaching business. You know, they don't want these things that complicate their lives. Yeah. And so they're, they're happy to just promote affiliate offers and take commissions and earn money that way. Makes sense. Um, um, and so that, that's kind of our ideal client. Although um, some of our ideal clients do have some additional internal products that we can promote. And actually that works out really well for us because it's unique, unique copy. Usually it's a unique product that's only being sold on the back end. And um, sometimes we're allowed to run like holiday based promotions. Yeah. Uh, so Labor Day sale, you know, coming up would be an example for the US. Um, mm -hmm. I just did a back to school sale that I did for one client, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, two emails on the same day, both did $11,000, $22,000 nice. in a day. Nice. Yeah. So that's, that's, it, it blows away any results of any affiliate offer I can, I can mail. Right. So if I can mail some like an internal offer um, with a discount, like on a holiday based promotion, that's great. You know? Yeah. Great. So, great. But, but we look every day, we look at, um, we look at uh, domain reputations, IP reputations for our clients. We make sure that nothing is happening. And if something happens, we can deal with it right away. Right. Hmm. So un unfortunately what happens with these, with clients before they come to us is either they're not mailing often enough, or they've ignored, they had a problem. They knew what the problem was, but they didn't know how to fix it. So they let it go too long. Yeah. And so then it's a lot harder to fix by the time it gets to mm -hmm. us. Or sometimes it's even another list manager who may just not be as knowledgeable about um, deliverability and making how to make sure the account's set up right, you know, and how to segment mm -hmm. properly and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so then they end up, again, letting a problem develop that goes yeah. on for too long and then it becomes a big problem that we have to fix. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you had like, based on your experience, what would you say is like the biggest, not mistake that clients make, but what would you say is like 
the biggest issue they have when you get like a new account and you have to fix it like okay what's like the biggest thing that you have seen so far um usually usually it's something like the domain is not authenticated properly okay like with with like dmark dkim and spf mm -hmm. so yeah. their their domain domain authentication is not is not set up properly or um they're potentially on a shared IP block with their current ESP. Mm -hmm. And one of those, you know, one of those IPs or multiple of those IP addresses are on blacklists, mm -hmm. um, you know, for spam. Um, um, so those are, those are kind of like a blacklist problem is, is a little bit harder to fix um, an authentication problem. Um, I, you know, I did an audit for somebody free because we, we offered to do a handful of audits for Amber Spears. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we had, I think seven, we offered 10 and I think eight people replied and we did like six because we had to have access to their ESP. If they don't give us access, we could do the audit. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, one guy, yeah, I, I did, I did the audit and I was like, yeah, you got you, a domain authentication problem. And so he just fixed it and that was it, you know, so he didn't, he didn't need us. He just fixed it. So, um, yeah. um, that's an easier problem to fix, but a lot of people don't know about it. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're like a business owner and you're busy with like a thousand different things, yeah. I mean, figuring out email deliverability is like too much. Like it's too complicated. Yeah. That, that's yeah. why they come to guys like you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we also do we also do like email re reactivation campaigns, um, mm -hmm. and um, we use uh, we use Inbox Geek for some of those automations. Uh, so mm -hmm. we can we can set up a yeah that reactivation campaign where Inbox Geek will then look and see when that person is active in their inbox and then mm -hmm. trigger the sequence. Oh, that's when smart. they're actually nice. in yeah we, yeah when they're actually in their inbox. And then boop, they get the email, they see it. And so we've tried reactivation campaigns just using like um, the native uh, uh, filters and stuff within an ESP. And those typically only get like three to 5% open rates. But then with Inbox Geek, I've been able to get like 30%. That's great. And these are yeah. th these are people who haven't opened an email in you know 90 days or more. Mm. Yeah, that's nice uh all right cool stuff so then i guess like one final question that i have about what you guys do is that uh how do you actually like uh, you said that you do affiliate promotions do you write the emails yourself do, or do you use the emails that some of the vendors um provide you with so we we typically will use the the email swipes that are provided by the vendor Mm -hmm. because because they've been heavily tested and yeah. they'll say hey this is our top performing email here's our second best email here's our third best email sometimes mm -hmm. i'll read through it and go ah, i you know i don't like the the best performing email it's not yeah. it doesn't feel right for this list mm -hmm. so maybe we'll go to number 2 mm -hmm. um other times we'll send we'll test the email we'll send the the email out to our test email boxes and it hits promotions or it hits spam yeah. And so then I have to, I have edit to do tweaks. I yeah. have to edit the email. I have to tweak the subject line. I have to make some changes and, mm -hmm. and figure out what's going on. Um, other times um, I'll be provided with a set of swipes that I don't like. Yeah. You know, I, that's happened before mm -hmm. like four emails and I read them all and I'm like, none of these are good. Yeah. But then maybe there's like a, a part of one email where I go, oh, I kind of like that. You know, mm -hmm. so I'll just rip that out and then I'll build my own email. I'll write the rest of it myself. Mm -hmm. Um That's more. and then and then send that out. Um there was a guy who came to me one time. Um this is uh the, the offer is skinny me chocolate. Mm -hmm. And they wanted they wanted us to promote as an affiliate. Yeah. And I said, So do you have any swipes? He's like, Oh, well, we've never we've never really done this this way before so no we don't we don't have any emails i was like that's fine i'll write up an email real quick <clears throat> i wrote that email i think 
four or five years ago and I'm still running it. <laughs> That's and, great. And it's, it's generated well, well into the six figures of, of conversions for them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. And did you use like, what type of copy do you use? Did you use the classical clickbaity copy, like the story? Uh, do you remember what did you use? Uh, it really, it really depends on the product, honestly. Um, but yeah, most of it, most of it is going to be more clickbait style mm -hmm. emails. Mm -hmm. They're short. They, in, you know, hook you with curiosity and mm -hmm. try to get you to click through. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I've found, uh, there's one client in particular, um, where the, the control emails that I've written for her and actually one other client also a her they're more story based. Now mm -hmm. they're, they're still clickbaity in the sense that there's a hook, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but there's a lot of emotion like in the, in the story that's being told. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, Hey, here's the story. And then here's how she fixed it. And then here's the, the call to action, which again is that kind of yeah high curiosity click through mm -hmm. to find out what it, what it is. So yeah, gotcha. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, what, I'm also yeah, sure. I was gonna say one other email I wrote recently was more um that became a control for an offer was more content based. Okay. So it was uh I'll just give you kind of the structure. It was like five blank facts everybody should know. Okay, that's interesting. Super super basic. Not mm -hmm. hypey at all, mm. um, but that that ultimately was the winner. And repeatedly, I uh, it won in three consecutive split tests on three different lists. That's great. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's always like amazing how some of the simplest things can actually generate the most money, especially in email. Um, yeah, I was working for Ning Li, who's who was and is now currently like the I think the copy chief for Paleo Hacks. And he was telling me that one of like Paleo Hex for anyone who doesn't know is like a big like cookbook company. They have like a lot of different free plus shipping offers. And he told me that their best email was like something dumb. And that's like the term Ning used. Uh, something dumb as congratulations, you won. You won. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, something like this. And it's he's like, yeah. I've tried like okay, tons of different emails and nothing comes clear to beating this one. So yes, yeah, simple can sometimes pretty much win. Yeah, no, I, I, I've, uh, I've mailed that offer and that email many times. I know exactly which one it is. Yeah. And, uh, there's an alternate, uh, subject line as well. Um, that works well for it, which is mm -hmm. just confirm your shipping, you know, confirm shipping yeah, address. Exactly. You know, yeah. um, yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, sometimes those, I would call those, uh, gimmick emails, right? Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a gimmick, but, but yeah. It works. Uh, funny story, like uh, I actually took the format of the congrats you won and I used this for a Bizop client who also had a free plus shipping uh, offer. We got like four times or five times the number of clicks we usually get. And I was looking at the stats and I emailed the client like, yo, dude, I mean, is this right? Like, did something break with ConvertKit? And he was like, no, no, I mean, those are real numbers, but please yeah. don't say stuff like this because they might ban us. Like, I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, he was worried yeah. that, okay, saying that you, I'm not sure how true this is, but he was worried that saying yeah. that, oh, you won might get us in trouble with ConvertKit. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and you might actually with ConvertKit, that's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, uh yeah, I guess it's a gray area in terms of how ethical that is to yeah. be claiming somebody won when there was when there was no drawing, there was no no contest. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, okay, like I don't think I have like any other questions. So, is there like, do you think there was I should have asked you something during our talk that I didn't, and you would like to answer it right now? Oh. Uh. 
I think we, this is a great interview, man. I think we covered a lot of cool stories, a lot of, and your, yeah, your questions it. pulled out a lot of good lessons. Um, I guess the only other thing I would say is, uh, I don't publish there often, but if you'd like to hop on my email list, ryanhealy.com, just R Y A N H E A L Y.com. Um, I don't mail daily, but yeah. I do mail intermittently think, throughout the month. I think I was checking it live today. Like you also have like a cool lead magnet, right? Like, uh, a nine page, uh, checklist, something like that. What is it? Yeah. It's yeah. It's like an 82 point copywriting checklist broken Damn. down by cat by category. Great. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's cool. Good to check yeah. this out. Okay. I'm also going to include the link like, uh, in the description for you. Um, if people want to reach out to you, like, are they allowed to, since you're like fully booked with clients, like, okay, how can they reach out to you? Uh, you can, uh, you can email me at Ryan at upsender.com. So oh, like R Y A N at upsender.com. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. Um, feel free to reach out on Facebook or Twitter. I do. I'm active on both of those. Uh, well, X, sorry. The, X. the platform oh, formerly known as yeah. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can reach me there too. So yeah, all good. <laughs> That's great, man. That's great. Uh, Oh, yeah. yeah, man. I mean, it was like great talking to you. Thanks for this interview. And yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully we're going to do this again some other time. Sounds great. Thank you, Fotis. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Take care. Let me like.